What's up guys? Welcome back to Neckbeard Game Devs. Let's make a slot machine game. We're going to get started with the game logic. So, let's make a couple let's make a new folder first, slot scripts. And then we'll create a couple C# -sharp scripts. First one, a slot controller. This will spin the reels, it'll accept when we touch the handle or touch a button, whatever we decide to do. Second script, a score calculator. After every spin, we'll send the information to the score calculator. And the third script, uh, an audio controller, or audio control, whatever you want. So you got your three main scripts here. I always like doing a main audio controller instead of having separate audio um, throughout the game. It just makes it, you know, real simple to keep it in one spot. You can see where everything is. And then you can write code to, you know, automate it a bit more. My Visual Studio here, I updated it, so bear with me. All right, so as soon as um, Mirror's probably booted right away, but here we go. Let's go ahead and open up these three files. Mainly we're going to work in the slot controls, but we'll get them all here in our environment. So when we open up the project, it, they're all here to work on. Already another update. This is never ending. So with this, uh, this part of the tutorial, we're just going to start building the very basic logic just to get the by the end of this this video we'll get the real spinning we'll kind of figure out you know what's going on and how how are we going to go around in spinning the wheels pressing the button or pulling the the handle down whatever whatever logic we end up going with like i said i already coded the game that's similar but this one I wanted to do, I wanted to update everything. That was my first time trying to code a um, slot machine game all on my own. So there's a lot going on, but it's, it's not too bad. So let's just get these set right away so we don't forget. We're not going to be accessing them in this uh, video, but we'll just get this down here. Let's just call a couple public game object arrays. I'm going to start off with spinners and colliders. We're going to need to grab the rigid bodies of the reels. So we could spin them and stop them. So we'll keep those in array also. Need a couple, couple public bulls. We'll just keep them public for now so we can keep track of them in the editor. Plus if we need to access them from the score calculator, we can. I'm just putting a couple different bools here. I'm not sure if we'll use every single one, but these are going to be some some that we can access right away. They made sense to me. So let's go ahead and 
we're going to set up a test environment and try to get our reels spinning. So we'll start off here, if spinning bool. And we'll turn this bool off. Set it to false. Now if you're brand new to coding and the way that updates work is that it, this update is always going to be looking for that spinning bool. And so if we would do logic, say our spinning bool false later down the line here, it could recycle into that into this code. So that's why you if you're going to use booleans soon, you know, soon as you see it in the update, you should shut it off. It should be the, the next line of code and then all the rest of the code we could do. And then if we decide to turn it back on, you know, in code we can, or a button right now with these tests, I think we're just going to do um, a button, um, or in the test we're going to do it in the code, but, it, you know, we could have a couple different buttons to to uh, spin, the, spin the reels, and basically all we'd have to do is turn this bool on. It would be a very simple one line of code. With this uh, Boolean array, I, or you know, with these real arrays, I end up using a for loop. I I was just kind of writing the code, and uh, just got a little ahead of myself here. So I wouldn't type every single line as I'm typing it, because I I do go back and fix this and put this into a for loop, and uh, so you kind of see. I was just kind of putting my ideas down here of what I wanted to do. But also, um, you're not going to freeze all these reels at the same time. So we might have to separate them in the future. We're going to want to stop the first reel and, and see what's going on with it, then stop the second reel, then stop the third reel. Now, I'm not sure if you guys ever played the old school slots, but that's kind of how they work. They they don't stop all at the same time. It's it's kind of like a, a slight delay, or say if you hit the bonus, it spins the spins the reel again. So there is a possibility that we're gonna have these all separated. But we know that the left reel is zero, the middle reel is one, and the right reel is two. So it'd be pretty simple to set this up either way. But go ahead and create the. Um, I, I enumerator spinning, and um, we will be accessing that for sure. So for these for loops, since you're using an array, you can actually set the array length so that you are exactly set up with what, how long of the array that you're looking to to manipulate with the code. So here. You know, we're going to be doing some stuff with the colliders on and off um, so that we can get the information, the, the actual hit information of what's what happened so we could send it to the uh, score calculator. And that's how we're going to get this information through small little collide collisions. Just kind of reformatting that into that for loop. And we could always add a delay inside the for loop or uh, put the delay into an, the, uh, put this uh, for loop into an I enumerator and um, put a delay each time it spins the reel or, you know, stops the reel. 
But for now, we're just going to try to get get the reels spinning, kind of see what they look like, and um, start playing around with the uh, with the rigid body and the physics of the actual spinning of the reels. I'm just trying to figure out like exactly what we want. We're going to want, you know, the the freeze rotation Z to be the only rotation that gets affected. So when you freeze all, when you unfreeze all, you kind of have to set back your constraints to exactly the settings you want. So we might have to play around with this just a bit, but we'll get it. Plus, you got to remember there's like freeze position and local position, local rotations. And sometimes, um, you know, it just it kind of it takes a couple couple tries to get it perfect. All right. So first we have to call this I enumerator. We have to call the coroutine and then we have to set this spinning bool true. We could do it in the start, but I don't want to do it in the start. Well, I think we're just going to set it true in the editor, and then after it starts spinning, we'll set it true. We'll set it true in. Uh, we'll just set it true in this I enumerator. The other thing we're going to do is we're going to spin the reels at a random. At a random. Um, power you know at the random torque power so that they're not spinning at the same speed um the same they're not going to be probably you know only they're going to start at the same time but each reel is going to be spinning at a, just a very 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 little different bit of speed which will you know give us a uh, give us some effects all right let's add the slot controls to I'm just going to put it on the main camera for now. We've got our three spinners set. All right, so now we got random range. Make sure you add your start coroutine spinning. I ended up putting the wait for seconds for 10F and spinning bool true at the end of that. So it'll auto spin after we get it started. We're going to do reels at torque. We're going to use this random torque on the z-axis. Just give it a quick impulse. Now let's give this a spin. All you'll have to do is set your spinning bool to true. Now let's pull the camera in just a little tighter so we can see it. All right, so we got our debug logs showing us our 
torque range, but we got no spin. Comment that out real quick. Go ahead and grab all three of these guys, and we'll s we'll freeze these in the editor for now. See what's going on. All right, so they're spinning. They're spinning the right way. The wrong way, I mean, but at least they're spinning. So we could freeze rotation x, we could freeze y, z is our z is our axis. It's exactly what I thought. All right, so let's take a look here. We're going to need to work with these rigid body constraints, so let's see if we can get them right this time. I think I figured it out. We need to add a little more, one more yield return here to work with. All right, let's give it a shot. There we go. There's our first run at it. Well, it looks like we got the got the real spinning. We got them stopping. We got a little bit of auto spin. Now we got to separate this code that now that it's working and give it some action. Give it some reading the scores, adding torque to the next reel if we get the bonus just the uh, a little random weight stop in between each stop of the reels little stuff like that that we'll be adding in the next episode i hope you guys enjoyed it uh, a little patience there with the needed a little patience with getting the reel started but hey we got them going i hope uh hope you have a great day hope you're healthy neck beard out